Hi everybody, the five most blatantly corrupt industries in the world. Corruption is everywhere, but nowhere is it too, so blatant and so deep-seated as in the five following industries. Banking, energy, agriculture, biotech, media, and healthcare. healthcare. Conspicuously missing from this list, of course, is politics. The reason that politics was not included is because political corruption is very rare, rarely confined to the political arena. It is almost entirely the result of financial lobby and backing, so I decided to focus on the industries behind the issue, rather than the politicians themselves. Hopefully, you will find this article eye-opening as well as empowering in your effort to affect change today. Number one, banking. All money comes into circulation through an interest-based loan from either the Federal Reserve or another private bank. As a result, there is more debt than money in our economy. This is not due to irresponsible lending, but is inherent to the mechanics of all fiat currency. Every time a loan is repaid, interest is transferred from the working class to the ownership class. Structural classism is therefore built directly into the system. Again, it is not simply a result of greedy people within the system, it is a reality upon which the entire concept of bank banking is predicated. Uh, predicated. The solution? Credit unions, at least in the short term. While still technically a fractional reserve lending system, credit unions have one important difference from conventional banks. No shareholders. With conventional banks, a large amount of the revenue generated from the lending programs is paid to the super ownership class of the bank owners. They receive interest on money that they, they aren't even necessarily lending themselves. They just take it because they can. Our bank are rules, bitch. With credit unions, there are no shareholders. All revenue from loans is paid to members and employees. Again, not perfect, but far better. Personally, I would recommend only keeping as much money in a credit union as you need to meet your day-to-day -day expenses. The rest could be put to better use with more globally harmonious investments. Number two, energy. 69.3% of U.S. energy comes from burning fossil fuels. This process releases lead and arsenic into the air and water and is the number one source of mercury contamination in the United States. More than 99% of the world's cars run on an internal combustion engine burning either petroleum or an oil derived from genetically modified soy. 14% of the world's electricity comes from nuclear fission. We have no way to reintegrate the waste product in this process. Ecologically, as it is one of the most radio radioactively toxic substances ever designed, our current model is to bury it under Yukon Mountain in Nevada and, well, hope that one ever goes near that godforsaken place. Biofuels, bio, biofuels are made almost entirely from subsidized GMO crops and still emit carcinogen, car, carcinogens during combustion. The solution? Renewable electricity. This is the only known ecologically harmonious option for energy. Options to create this include solar, wind, wave, tidal, and especially geothermal energy. Using these techniques at our current technological capacity, we could power the entire planet many times over without one calorie coming from fossil fuels or nuclear reactors. In addition, Nikola, Nikola Tesla developed a method to generate literally infinite energy anywhere, directly from the electric field of the universe. His discoveries and all replications since have been systematically defunded and either confiscated by military intelligence or destroyed through arson. See the movie Thrive. As for practical applications today, simply do your best to cut your footprint, not of carbon emissions, but of the non-harmonious energy empire, and fund alter alternatives as you can personally afford to. Good options are walking, riding your bike, fitting up your house with solar panels if you own a home, and buying into local independent sustainable energy co-ops if you don't. This is also one of the good investments 
I was referring to above. And of course there's a movie called Sirius coming out very, sh very, very soon that will show a lot of the alternative energy sources that we can use. All right. Number three, agriculture. U.S. subsidized crops range from 65 to 94 percent in their use of genetically modified organisms. In case there is any doubt that, that our government was in bed with, I would say our government was in bed with Monsanto, GMOs are organisms whose genes have been spliced with genes from other species to better benefit the business model of the companies selling them. One highly prevalent example is the Terminator gene which causes the organism to be sterile. This forces the, the grower to buy, a, buy new seeds from Monsanto every year rather than simply replanting the seeds of their harvest as nature intended. I wonder how eating 90% sterilized food might affect the reproductive health of humans. Don't a lot of people have issues with that these days? Oh well, it's cheaper. 99% of U.S. agriculture is grown with petroleum-based fertilizer. Thought we only use that stuff for cars and plastics, huh? Think again. By buying conventionally grown food, you are in fact supporting the American war machine. 99% of agriculture in the U.S. is grown with pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, or a cocktail, cocktail of a three. These are toxic chemicals designed to kill organisms outside the intended mon monoculture. The only reason the crop itself can survive these sprains is because they have been genetically modified to withstand them. Monsanto's Roundup Ready gene, for example, allows crops to tolerate ordinary toxic levels of the patented poison. The problem with this process is that it delivers food which may appear healthy, yet is likely to be carrying significant levels of toxins within it. The solution? Whenever possible, grow at your own home and with organic non-GMO seeds. When you can't grow it yourself, buy local or regional organic. If you can't buy local or regional organic, you probably don't need to be eating it. Number four. Almost 100% of the mainstream media is owned by seven companies. Disney, News Corp, Time Warner, CBS, Viacom, NBC Universal, and Sony. They control everything from movies and television to all the major newspapers and even music record labels. When one company dominates an industry, it is called a monopoly. When a handful of companies cooperatively dominate the industry, it is called a cartel. This is what we have with our mainstream media, an elite group that is cooperatively and covertly controlling everything that comes through our television, radio, newspaper, and theater. When people say that the mainstream media is biased toward special interest groups, it means that the super elite own it all, own all of it, and don't allow exposure to people who expose their globalist agenda. Consider, for example, why filmmakers such as Peter Joseph and Dylan Avery have never been interviewed on mainstream TV. Their films, Zeitgeist and Loose Change, respectively, are the two most viewed documentaries in the history of the internet. Their work is systematically blacklisted, however, Due to its accurate exposure of the forces at work behind the media empire, as well as every other industry outlined in this article. Well, actually, you can watch Zeitgeist uh, 1, 2, and 3 on Netflix now. So that it, it's starting to get out on the mainstream. The solution cancel your subscription to cable, it will save you money and disconnect you from the pop propaganda machine. Get your news and world affairs from independent sources who are not in the pocket of the financial super elite. There are some big names in the alternative media who are uncovering much more than what can be found among the so-called mainstream, as well as hundreds of others you could find on Blog Talk Radio and various blogs. What's more, don't get all your information from any one place. Diversify and see what truly resonates with you. For those who want to go to the extra mile, Start blogging yourself and sharing important information through social media. Do your part to help get the important headlines out there and visible. Your ability to do this is phenomenal. Even if all you do is post a video on your Facebook, you are likely to generate at least 20 views for an issue that otherwise will not have been there. 
as more people are waking up to the system and starting to do this every day, I believe very strongly that the media empire's days are numbered. Number five, health care. Pharmaceutical companies provide corporate sponsorship for scientific journals, medical school textbooks, and political lobbies. A pro-pharmaceutical bias has, has been scientifically documented and in the British Medical Journal. Med students study drugs in almost every quarter of their degree and take on average only one class on nutrition. There is not a single pharmaceutical drug that actually makes people healthier. Pause for the cries of indigenation. What pharmaceuticals do is mask symptoms, destroy cells indiscriminately, or introduce small amount of disease vaccinations. There is not a single one that actually harmonize, harmonizes the human body. Say what you want about having these options in your back pocket, but recognize that none of them are good for you, and none of them cure disease. Only the human immune system can do that. The solution. Become an expert on your own health. Learn and implement harmonious nutrition, exercise, and hobbies. If you don't get those three figured out for yourself, your health will deteriorate and the medical pharmaceutical industry will not save you. It's time to empower yourselves with understanding. For more complex health issues, explore alternative approaches that are harmonious with the functioning of the human system. Some awesome options are acupuncture, reiki, and cryopractics. For health consultations and checkups, you are better off with a naturopath or homeopath than a conventional MD. And finally, if you have a chronic pain condition and feel that you just need some relief in the interim period while you, while you heal, toss the semi-synthetic opiates out the window and roll yourself a joint. That's just my two cents. My hope is that this information will empower you to realize that you can affect change today. Don't let yourself become overwhelmed and paralyzed. Recognize the change that you can make in your life and begin with one small step. Transfer your money, buy a bike, invest in a solar co-op, cancel your cable, and eat some organic vegetables. Do not underestimate the power behind these actions. To change the world and free ourselves from this, these systems, it is going to take a lot of change from everyone on the individual level. But that long road starts with one person taking responsibility for their actions and just putting one foot in front of the other. Be that person. Change the world. Take care, everybody, and have a beautiful day.